Right. Well, it's a challenge um, year in and year out. You know, I don't think it ever gets any easier. Winning is hard, as we know. Um, but, um, you know, as I said earlier, you know, I think when you've um, accomplished and had the success that we've had, we've it's not it's never easy recruiting. But, um, you know, we've we've been able to continue to bring in really skilled players, you know, into our program and um, the only way that you win is by having great players. You know, you can have the strategies and the X's and O's and think you're the best coach, but uh, two things have to happen. Uh, you have to bring in skilled players, but also your culture. You have to be out, able to out-culture people as well. And by that, I mean your, your locker room has to be healthy and um, your, your kids have to be about one another and uh, nobody is more important than the other girls sitting next to you and so we've we've been able to um, um, accomplish what we've been able to accomplish because two of those things continue to happen we bring in really good players but also the culture piece mm -hmm. right That's a great question. Um, she is phenomenal, and she is. Um, I always, I always can categorize her as a kind of a throwback because of her feet, her hands, her quick hips, her ability to score around the bucket um, is um, unusual. You know, at the rate that she scores at. Um, I think in order for um, her to have the popularity on a national stage space, uh, we have to have people on a national stage or in that space um, that write about her. And um, by that, you know, I spoke to a gentleman last year um, that um, asked me why Mackenzie should be considered one of the best players in the country. And it struck me that, um, you guys in our local media have the luxury of being able to watch her night in and night out. Um, but uh, maybe some of the people on a national level don't either take the time or the effort to watch a kid like Mac and, and what makes her so special. And so uh, my challenge is for um, whether it's media, people that write about women's basketball, um, they need to do a better job of, of watching Mac. Um, uh, because I can tell her story, um, but uh, to watch her is to understand what makes her one of the best players in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, I'm, I mean, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we talk a lot about um, the we factor over the me factor, and Mac is a true example of that every day. She does not think she's bigger than the team. She realizes that she needs the people around her in order to help her be successful, um, and that's always how it's been. And that started when Allie Patberg was in our, in our program. Anytime any of our kids have received accolades, awards, uh, they're the first ones to tell you that it's it wouldn't be possible without the help of their teammates, and Mac is just like that. Most humble, hardworking, uh, best players in the country. Mac would probably tell you she wants to be she wants to shoot more threes and be consistent beyond the arc. Um, you know, that's every year we sit down and we try to to uh, collaborate with every one of our players in terms of um, improvement, you know, development, but also what do they want to add to their game. Uh, and Mac has, uh, in the last few years, has always talked about, you know, being able to be consistent beyond the arc. Um, 
me opening our playbook up and running more sets for her, which give her the opportunity to to, to shoot from beyond there. Um, and so, yeah, I think for Mac, it's just being consistent. You know, she hasn't been consistent, and we watch her shoot them every day, uh, whether it's in practice, whether we shoot, watch her in uh, player development sessions. She's more than capable. It's just the confidence of being able to shoot more of them um, and be more consistent beyond the arc. I think that's what will set her apart. You know, we all, we all know that she can score at a high rate around the, the basket, but now it becomes, can you become consistent also from beyond the arc? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Well, we know this. Uh, you know, one of the things about uh, post players, especially fives, they're really comfortable inside that paint. They're not as comfortable outside. Uh, and so, I, you know, I, one of the things that would do is create problems from a matchup perspective. Um, you know, for some of those defenders, for sure. Um, but it would give us another person that uh, you have to guard outside of there. You know, because a year ago when we got Sydney Parrish, when we were able to get Sarah Scalia, Yarden, Garzon, um, Chloe, you know, proved that she could shoot it also at a high clip um, outside the arc. Now you have five guys out there that can really stretch out the defense and put a lot of pressure on the defense. Well, we'll see if Matt can become more consistent. Yeah, but um, you know, I think we we um, uh, we're we're sort of risk takers when it comes to looking at things sort of outside the box and trying to figure out how we can play different from time to time. Maybe that small ball, big ball. How maybe we can bring Mac out on the perimeter, play five out. Um, you know, that's what the off season's for. You know, you expect your players to get better, and then we got to get better as coaches in terms of uh, the pieces we have and how can we be more creative and what can we do different. Uh, that maybe some other teams aren't doing. How can we be harder to guard, uh, less predictable? Um, and so that'll, we'll see as we go down, you know, as we start here where we just finished practice number six. So, um, you know, we'll see. Yeah. She does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's real easy. You just said, Matt, get out. Get out, Matt. And then she'll look at you and you'll, no, get out, Matt. And so that's really a conversation that happens inside of practice. Um, as I, I think I mentioned to you, we got to protect Mac from Mac. She's a competitor. She loves the game. She loves to be in. Uh, she loves to be on the floor with her teammates. And um, we knew going into this, in order to manage Mac, would mean that uh, there were going to be days that she was going to probably be mad at times. Um, but... Um, it's our job to, uh, you know, protect her. I know we can't completely com protect her, uh, but to take some of the load off of her during the season, um, you know, she's done it so many a million times, right? Um, and uh, when we feel like it's it's the right time to get her out and give her less reps, uh, that's really how it goes. We do have, there's some analytics behind it, but it's also just a general feel for, okay, yeah, um, you know, we know, you know, uh, Sharnice can use all those reps. Lily can use all those extra reps. Uh, you know, uh, Ariel, you know, can benefit from all those extra reps. And so we try, really try to make sure that, um, you know, those kids are, are in as much as possible to give them experience, but also the reps. Well, I think time will tell. She's uh, she is um, you know, obviously explosive athlete. Runs uh, the floor hard. A great rebounder around the rim. Has a good nose for the ball. Um, scored you know was their leading scorer at UT Martin. Um, so she has the experience. I don't know that um, in terms of the experience of playing at this level. When I say high level, is going to be um, you know uh, different for her, but. Um, you know, she does, um, you know, she, she shows glimpses in practice of, of someone that we can really, really utilize, and especially with her athleticism um, and um, her ability to, again, be committed to running the floor. Um, but she has, um, 
she has a ways to go in terms of uh, getting back. She's been she's been dinged up a little bit after we got back after our return from Greece. Um, you know, she's had a hamstring in, injury, a little uh, bugaboo there that just won't seem to go away. So we've tried to hold her out. Um, um, I haven't tried to hold her out, but we've tried to hold her out in hopes that we can get that thing to heal. Um, because that's one of those injuries, though, if you just keep, if you don't give it enough time, uh, it just it stays, right? It lingers. And so uh, she's she's been out of uh, practice. She's just actually last week got in for the first time uh, in about two two weeks. And so she's playing catch up right now. But um, I do think that there's potential there for her to be able to help us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, we uh, we didn't find uh, any new recruits, um, but uh, that's okay because we uh, we feel like we're we're onto some good ones right here in the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that has happened uh, in women's basketball is just not just the popularity, but the exposure. You know, we talk to so many recruits now on the phone that have watched us play. Many years ago, that wouldn't have been the case, right? Unless you had Big Ten Network, Big Ten Plus, you were able to do that. And so now that, uh, you know, you're you're on national TV, um, not that it's made recruiting easier, but you – it, it uh, you know, we have so many conversations with parents, with players that have said, oh, I've, we've watched you play. We know, we know what, uh, how you play. Uh, we love your, your style of play. Uh, we know that you um, uh, hang your hat on the defensive side of the ball. And so that's, that's really uh, uh, been an advantage for us is that we now are talking to players um, because of the exposure that have seen us play. Yeah, we, we have uh, yet to really have a discussion about that. Um, it would be above my pay grade to figure out. Uh, I know it took some time for them to just uh, figure out the football schedule when it was just UCLA and USC. And so, um, you know, I got to leave that to the Big Ten that they'll figure that out um, and, um, you know, make it make it doable for everybody to have a great experience uh, because it uh, – you know, adding those four, the big was already good. You know, now we just made it that much better with the addition of those teams. Um, I do think the, and I don't know if it's a challenge. It's going to be interesting just to see how the, the schedule, how it, how it plays out. You know, for uh, the new ones, the the new teams that are joining us. I think we'll have to. Yeah, I think we'll have to. I don't know that we'll go to 20. I don't. I think maybe we feel like the sweet spot would be 18, 19, maybe. But again. You know, that's one less thing I, I want to worry about. I just want to worry about, you know, our team. We always want to uh, have a deeper uh, rotation. Uh, it just, uh, you know, those kids have to, to be able to um, uh, show us every day in practice that we can count on them. And... Um, um, you know, our job is to win basketball games, and uh, we take that uh, very serious. And um, I know all of our kids want to play. I'd love to play all of them also. Uh, but uh, you guys know there's 200 minutes in a game, and when you have 13, 14 on your roster, it's, it's impossible to keep them all happy. Um, but um, would, love to, uh, would love to play uh, more, more players and uh, give some of those kids uh, extra reps off. But sometimes it just, uh, depending on the game, uh, you can't do that. They've been great. Um, they've been, they're pleasers. Um, they're obviously Miss Basketballs, have been Miss Basketballs in their respective states. So we know that there's talent there. But, uh, uh, you know, this is a different level. And they're finding that out uh, every day in practice. Uh, with the competition that's inside of practice. And so I think they're learning a lot. 
Um, I think at times they get discouraged like a lot of freshmen. Uh, the big, biggest learning curve is always on the defensive side of the ball, especially away from the ball. Um, and so it's, it's every day. Um, but we're trying to give them extra reps, uh, whether that's in practice, outside of practice, doing a little bit more with them um, to try to, um, you know, hurry their, their learning curve. Um, but um, they're, they've been so coachable, um, great competitors. Uh, they're going to have, I think, both of them very bright futures in our, in our program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think it's all, it's human nature for us to not be disappointed um, that we, you know, we're not able to carry out the job um, um, and do the job that we, um, you know, we were out to, to do. But um, I also think it's my job as the leader to remind them of what they were able to accomplish. And, um, and we don't want to forget that, right? Because it's hard to win a Big Ten championship. You know, it's really, really hard thing to do uh, in, a, in a year that uh, I think, again, was one of the best, uh, you know, we were the best conference in the country. Um, and so um, I want them to remember that. Um, but I also know this about our group, uh, very disappointed and how it ended. Um, and so, um, you know, we uh, don't look in the rear view mirror. We got to look ahead to what's, you know, what's in front of us. And um, I think that's what maybe motivates them. It's a little bit of their motivation. I don't want it to be all of their motivation, but, um, you know, certainly it's in the back of their minds for sure that um, we feel like we let one slip away. And, um, you know, we have, to, we have to learn from it, move on from it and be better um, as, we, as we do move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, advice. Um, you know, I think one of the, the things that as an older coach now, um, you got to stick to your standards. You got to stick to your core values, your belief system, because this is a group, uh, um, a conference that can shake you. You can shake your confidence, um, and you want to revert back and, and wonder if you know you have to change things. And look, uh, these new uh, coaches that have joined us are here because they've had success. You know, you don't get jobs in the big because you know you you haven't won. And so, um, you know, that would be the the biggest um, encouragement. You know, that there's going to be uh, this is they, they're they're moving into a a really great league with really great players and great, great coaches. Uh, but they have to um, believe in, in what they've done at those other places. Because at the end of the day, basketball is basketball. And uh, they may uh, not have the evidence or the proof as quickly as they want, want it in terms of how they're doing things and how they're running their programs. Uh, but they have to believe that sooner or later, um, you know, those things are going to um, become, you know, true in terms of, um, you know, what they've, how they've always done it. Um, and there will be a, a, a growing, just like freshmen, right? There's a, there's a growing phase to all of this. And, uh, but just to believe in, in, you know, what you do and your standards and get the right people. That's the other thing too. You got to have the right people uh, around you, whether it's your staff and those players that believe in the vision that you have for the program. Um, and it's day-to-day it's -day grind, but you got to wake up and, and believe that what you're doing is, is going to get you to where you want to be eventually. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I think she a, a, uh, has contributed, but I think women's basketball, this, this league has contributed just as much in terms of uh, the popularity, but also the level of play. Um, you know, we sold out Simon Scott Assembly Hall having Purdue in our building, not Iowa. So, um, you know, I think that there's a real um, excitement around Big Ten women's basketball. Uh, I think that's one of the, the things that the, the new people, the, the UCLA's and the USC's and the, West, and the Washington's and Oregon, 
are going to be struck by that this league uh, plays in front of bodies, spectators, fans, excitement. And, um, and so it's been great to be a part of. It's been uh, so special for me to watch. Uh, never thought that I would see, uh, you know, Simon Scott Assembly Hall filled with, uh, with fans, you know, and have a sellout. Um, and then this is a kid that's grew up in Southern Indiana watching Indiana men's basketball. And so for us to be able to accomplish that on the women's side, um, you know, the 10,000 plus that we had when we played Ohio State on 8:30 on a Thursday night, I think was, you know, incredible. But um, you know, this is, um, and I think it. Um, I don't know if it, I think it puts pressure on other schools, right? To make sure that, you know, you uh, marketing and, you know, your marketing and uh, all your sports information people are really trying to, um, you know, um, up their game as well, right? Because we all want to be one of those teams that uh, the outside media talk about as, you know, being in Bloomington, you know, being at Iowa, you know, being in, at, in West Lafayette, being in Columbus, Ohio. Um, you know, you want to be a part of that conversation of, uh, you know, people that are, are teams that are in, in institutions that are drawing fans. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, I think everybody's, uh, I can uh, with confidence say everybody's excited about Indiana women's basketball. Um, you know, especially the fans that uh, have, have come, you know, have prior to the success, right? Because if you couldn't get a, a ticket for men's basketball, then not that you settled, but you could get a ticket for women's basketball and um, now because of um, the, the success, because of those players that we have inside of our program, um, you know, I think people are enjoying coming to the games. They enjoy the experience, especially if you're a family that have young kids. Uh, our players are accessible. They're around. Uh, families, young kids get to meet our players. Uh, when I go down to Seymour, of course, you're from Southern Indiana. You're one thing. You're an Indiana fan. So. Um, you know, I think you can go anywhere in the state. Everybody's very, very proud and has a tremendous amount of pride in what we've been able to do, um, you know, inside of our program um, because it, it's, you know, it hasn't been that way, right, for a long time. Uh, even if we, I don't know that we've ever had a history in our program of, you know, being one of those teams um, that people have talked about and are proud of. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really, really special. Yeah, you know, I think um, one of the things that we do inside our, our program is I've given uh, Mackenzie and our, you know, especially Mac and Chloe uh, an opportunity. We call them timeouts. So when things don't feel good when things feel like they're not um, maybe going in the direction that we would prefer, we like, maybe the energy level's low, uh, maybe we're not, um, um, you know, whether it's inside of a re rebounding drill, we're not, uh, you know, tactically doing what we need to do. We always give those guys an opportunity to call a timeout, bring the group together. So there's been some of those moments early on where it's like, you know, there's, there's this feel that, Coach isn't happy. Things we can feel it, right? Because they've been around the program long enough, and uh, so Mac may say, "Coach, we need a timeout." And then it's gathering those those kids and reminding them of, you know, what it is we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, you know, I think in those 10 days, you try to uh, lessen what you're doing as far as offensively. You know, certainly we worked both sides, but we put very few things in because uh, you just don't have the time. Um, but we did, we certainly put something in, right? Um, actions that uh, we were comfortable with. We'd, we'd ran, so there was comfort. There was, you know, being familiar. 
um, you know, to all that. But uh, we didn't try anything. You know, it was more or less um, just allowing our freshmen and charneys to get comfortable playing with that core group. Yarden came over and joined us. Um, Henna was not with us, so we didn't have our full team. Um, but I think it was, you know, when you do an international trip, it's it's every four years. We didn't get to go because of COVID, so we were up for it. It was our turn to go. Um, and so, again, those trips are more about the cultural experience and, and um, than they are basketball normally. But um, it always helps with, the, you know, you're around each other, the bonding, the chemistry piece. That, that always is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing for them is that um, they the understanding of when we're on the road and what preparing and what it, it looks like to get ready for a game. You know, for those freshmen, for Bo and and Jules um, and Charnese, it's like you know, uh, Bo and, and Jules have never traveled. You know, collegiately, Jules is obviously has, but everybody's preparation is a little bit different. Um, and so, uh, you know, being around vets, the way they've been able to be around, it's like, oh, ga game day's here. What does that look like for us? And so, uh, you know, I think that's probably the, one of the greatest lessons they learned is how we prepare what our, our pregame is going to look like. Once we get to the gym, what that looks like, um, how serious we are, how focused we are, uh, regardless of the opponent. And so, um, you yeah, know, there were some really good lessons that they were able to and experiences that they were able to get. Yeah. Yeah, I was a proponent of 30 days. Uh, I think um, the less, um, you know, all of us are all uh, uh, eager to know our roster. So whether that's you have kids leaving or whether that is uh, your, the scenario of you have to find somebody in the portal that can help you. Um, and so, um, like I said, I was for the less, uh, the 30-day window, but we, we settled in on the 45. Um, and that's fine. There needed to be a window, though. And uh, I think that's what we're all um, pleased with, is that, um, that determination that now we at least have an idea of when these kids have to make decisions. I think that's good for our game. Thank you, guys.